Home game number two for the Aggies. Very good crowd in their season opener against Western New Mexico. The Aggies last year 16-1 and one at home. They only have one home loss in each of the previous three years. It's going to be Trent Queen and former Bakersfield Roadrunner in the whack. Darius Williams to tip it up. The Aggies know Williams very well. Southern in the gold, the Aggies in the whites. Good officiating crew, Bob Staffen, Winston Stint, Marquise Pettigrew. And it's Bob Staffen who will toss the ball in the air here on Lou Henson Court. And Williams wins the opening tip for Southern. Jaguars 31% shooting last Saturday at Murray State, three of 22 from three. LaMarcus well, Lee picks up his dribble, defended by Terrell Brown. This is Jaden Sadler. The defense for Sean Buchanan. He's filling in for A.J. Harris at the point right now. A three for Shivers. The Siena transfer misses offensive rebound for Kanja Hovish. Fadeaway jumper as an air ball saved by Buchanan, but he was on the end line. It stays with Southern. Drew the cylinder, so the shot clock stays at 14. Boy, Chris Jans is giving Big Yvonne an earful there about not boxing out, which is highly unusual for, for Yvonne. He's, he's, he always does a great job getting position. They lob it in for Williams. Shot clock is down to 10 for Southern. They reset here with Sadler. Ball screen from Williams. Back outside for Shivers. Good denial on the way by Trev Queen, who can really use his 6'6 length to his advantage defensively. That's right, just three seconds on the shot clock here as we see Trev sort of deflected out of bounds. Shivers gets it in for Sadler. Lost the handle, picked up by Buchanan. Then poked away from behind by Lee. So now we'll see the Aggies in offense for the first time. We'll see if they can rebound after a tough offensive game against UTEP just 48 hours ago. 37% shooting in El Paso, 6 of 26 from 3. But the big issue was free throws, 2 of 11. Yes, that was, that was, not, that was not one of the highlights. Buchanan for Bobbitt. Ball reversal to Trev Queen. And a hand check foul is called on Ashante Shivers. Do you feel like Trev Queen could be the go-to guy this year consistently? Well, I think especially this early as we watch him off the dribble here. Yeah, I think especially early until until AJ and Clayton Henry get back. Uh, the funny thing about Trevlin Queen is he's so he's so smooth that it, it's deceptive how good he is. I think, and it, you know, he often doesn't jump when he shoots. If he doesn't have to jump, he doesn't. He's no wasted motion. But he's, very, he's a very efficient scorer. Terrell Brown outside for Queen, gets Williams in the air. Good ball movement for Terrell Brown. Offensive rebound for Ivan Aorekoechea. Buchanan nearly throws it away. Tapped in the backcourt, and the Aggies only have 10 to shoot as Brown moves into the forecourt. Four to shoot, good lob entry, and patience there from Aore Koachea. Ball is loose again, and we get a whistle and a foul. Foul is called on the rebound, and it's called on Aore Koachea. But again, it's always the battle for turf with, with Aore Koachea. Look at him go there. I mean, he's just all over the place. And he, he's not, he's not going to dunk it as much as he's going to scrap and get the ball and stick it back in. We'll see if the Aggie offense can find some rhythm, find some sharpness to them tonight. Even without those injured guys, a three is good for Amel Kajahovich, senior out of Waterloo, Iowa, transfer from Fullerton. Big man can shoot it at 6'10", 240. Grab Queen, head of the key on the wing, Brown. You can into Queen. Aggie scoreless, over two minutes in. And a foul is called on Kaja Hobish. It's a good matchup right there. A couple guys who are big and physical. 
Aureko Achea, 235. Kajahovic, 240. Both guys like to bang down low. Johnny McCants, the first sub off the bench as he comes in for Aure Cochea. Bounce goes in for Johnny McCants. And it's slapped out of bounds on the strip by Southern. Aggies 0 of 3 shooting to start. Southern 1 of 4. Buchanan bounces in to CJ Bobbitts. And he's fouled on his way up by LaMarcus Lee. Well, he's such a smart player, C.J. Bobbitt. That's not his thing. He's not going to go over you down low, he's, but he's a terrific passer. He can make three-pointers and, and make free throws. He didn't play well in El Paso. He, he was couldn't seem to get on track either, but he's been he's been a steady hand for Chris Jans, and partly because he, he, he you know he's just such a smart player. Bobbitt, 4-0-4 four four on free throws this year, and he misses his first one. I put the jinx on there. I'm not saying anything about good free throw shooting anymore. You know, Coach, the Aggies shot the ball from the free throw line very well in the opener against Western New Mexico, but Christian said post game, there wasn't a whole lot of pressure. They were up by 40. They weren't pressure free throws. They had some pressure free throws and could not make them on Tuesday. And Bobbitt misses both. Aggies still scoreless, two and a half in. Southern out of the swag from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Back to finish sixth this year in the swag. There's a turnover. Ball back to the Aggies. Buchanan, Brown, Bobbitt, McCants, and Queen on the floor right now. The rotation is much smaller this year because of the injuries to Henry and Harris. Queen's three is a brick. And the rebound is corralled by LaMarcus Lee. Chris Jans did not like that shot from his star guard, Trev Queen. Sadler oh. runs over McCants, and that's a charge. Out of control foul on Jaden Sadler. Watch McCants hustle to get over here. I think that was the right call. When I saw it happen live, I wasn't sure, but I think when we saw it in slow motion, I think that was the correct call. Fourth foul on Southern, only one on NM State so far. Jabari Rice in for the first time for the Yankees. He had 21 of the opener, then only scored three on Tuesday. Here's Rice, swings it for Bobbitt. The Kansas shot the three ball well this year so far. Much improved from a season ago. Terrell Brown with three to shoot. High post, Bobbitt, do the Aggies know it? Buchanan has to chuck it. He gets the rim, fight for the rebound, and it's touched by Jabari Rice. The Aggies are in a carryover funk from Tuesday offensively. Well, they, they seem to sort of still be getting a, a feel for, for the offense. And I know this is the, probably the last thing that the Aggies want is, is, is Sean Buchanan shooting up a three-pointer. It's just not his thing. He's a great leader, great defender but he's not the guy to be taking the three-pointer at the buzzer. Looks like LaMarcus Lee was in his mouth on the play. So he has to take a seat on the Southern bench. The Jaguars bring in Montez Blake, a transfer from Miami Dade College, and Skyler Baggs is also in for the first time. Sean Williams checks in for the Aggies, transfer from East Carolina. Harold, a transfer who was the American Athletic Conference Freshman of the Year a few years ago. Arias Williams now to Shivers, under 10 to shoot for the Jaguars. Good high hedge for Bobbitt. Shivers on the bounce, and a foul was called on Jabari Rice. And this will take us to a media. 15-58 left to go. First half action, the Yankees still scoreless. 0-4 from the field, Southern leads 3-0.
slow start for both offenses. 3-0 Southern, a scoreless round of over two minutes for Southern and no points. Four minutes and two seconds in for the Yankees here tonight at the Pan Am Center. Some rule changes to know about this year in men's basketball. The biggest change is the three-point line moving back. Approximately one foot, five inches back. And the reason being is to make the lane more available for dribble drive chances for the arc and also trying to make the three-point line more challenging and help offensive spacing. There's only been about a week of college basketball so far, Coach. I'm sure you've watched a good amount. Have you seen a whole lot of change with this three-point line moving back? Well, no, not yet, but it's too early. I think statistically it even, it's, it's too early in the, in the season to make any kind of judgment, I think. What I have noticed, Coach, is in the corners, since there isn't a whole lot of separation between the three-point line and the sideline, a lot of guys are stepping out of bounds in the corners. Their heels, yeah, with their heels on the, on the line, yes. Let's see if the Yankees can find some offense here with 15 and a half left in the first half. Pick and pop for Jabari Rice. Well off the mark. Offensive rebound for Rice. Can't stuff it in. Bobbitt trying to chase it down. We get a held ball. And possession will stay with the Aggies. Now the Aggies didn't score there, of course, but the, their movement was very good. That, that was much better executed. Just pretty good job of sharing the ball and getting things moving. At what point, if you're one of the coaches on the bench, do you start to worry about the offense starting to press a little too much here? Or well, is that already happening? Yeah, yeah and I, I think it's, you know, they're, they're, in, a, they're in a bit of a, a puzzle here with, with some of their best offensive players hurt. Rice on the baseline. Finger roll is good. Jabari Rice gets the first two for the Yankees here tonight. He's averaging 12 a game off the bench. Good high post denial there for Johnny McCanton. He scoops it up. Then they call a foul on Darius Williams, who wrapped up Johnny after he stole it from him. And it's still going to be Aggie ball. Very good denial near the arc for Johnny McCants. Great hustle for McCants. You know, Adam, that's why I, think, I wonder if Sean Williams could be the key here with A.J. Harris and Clay Henry hurt the, the transfer from East Carolina. I mean, he's put up a lot of points over the over his first couple of years at East Carolina, but he looked very tentative in El Paso the other day. Well, here is Williams getting free on the arc. Still trying to learn this system that Chris Giants has in place. Williams again, transfer from East Carolina. He's from Little Rock. Bobbitt, head of the key. And this will stay here as Jabari Rice was fouled underneath, fighting for the rebound. Pretty good body control here by Jabari Rice. Already six fouls on Southern. This one is called on Shivers. Number two on him. Buchanan will take a seat for the Yankees. Trev Queen is back in. They lob it for Queen, and he jams it home. Perfect pass, too, huh? The Yankees ran that play a few times last year and got dunks out of it from Queen. He used to run that a lot for Jamario Jones. And there you go. Johnson, Delore Johnson, that is, steps out of bounds in the corner. You're going to see that a lot now with the three-point line back. And it's not very far from the sideline in the corner. Yeah, I remember uh, when Larry Bird played, he'd sort of tiptoe over to the corner there and find that little spot. It's going to take get some getting used to for, for everybody in Division I. Scoreless drought of four minutes for Southern. Let's see if the Yankee offense finds a rhythm here. Sean Williams. Trev Queen guarded by Williams. Down low, Bobbitt catches, can't finish. But he's going to shoot two free throws once again. A pretty good look right there. Yeah, as, as well as C.J. Bobbitt played last year, he's, he's a blend player. He's a smart player, a good passer. I won't say anything about his free throws here this time, Adam. But but, but, I've, but I've always liked this game. He's, he's not he's not a huge inside threat. He, he's not a, he doesn't have the lift that a lot of guys his size have. But boy, is he smart. Uh, he's, he's such a smart player. 
Bobbitt from Colleen, Texas, a transfer from Denver, redshirt senior. Back on track after missing his first two free throws. Four of four combined in the first two games. LaMarcus Lee, who went down with an injury early on, he comes back in and replaces Montice Blake. One more for Bobbitt, who averaged five a game a season ago, four a game this year. And he will take a seat, and Ivan Aore Koachea returns. Do you feel like it's a bigger role this year for both Bobbitt and Ivan because Eli Chu has graduated? I think so, and the real pressure, I think, is not so much playing time, but, but scoring. You know, that Eli Chua could really get baskets. He could make a 15-footer. He was a terrific free throw shooter. He could score with either hand, and I think that puts extra pressure on, on the big guys now to, to pick up that scoring load. 6-0 Aggie run to take a three-point advantage. Long drought for Southern offensively. Micah Bradford, fall away jumper, rims in for the transfer from Valparaiso, the former Valpo Crusader. One transfer defending another right here. Williams on the exchange. Now to Rice. Slipping the screen is Aure Koeche, and he jams it home one-handed. Well, that's the kind of offense I think Chris Jans would like to run. That, that was really great patience, and, and Aure Koeche slips the screen and gets, gets the easy bucket. And after the dunk right here, Darius Williams, I'm not sure what happened, but he went down with an injury, and he is slow to walk off to the southern bench right now. That could be a huge blow for head coach Sean Woods. It's hard to tell what, you know, he's... Oh, no, it's not hard to tell. We don't want that on camera, fellas. Skyler Baggs comes in for Williams, who will take a seat. Great perimeter defense again. The staple of a Christian's team. Poked away from behind. And then Queen can't corral it. Good poke there by Johnny McCants underneath. That was by design there for Johnny. Under 10 to shoot for Southern. Lee has to hurry. Tough fall away jumper, 19 feet away, and he hits it over Sean Williams. Serious shot by LaMarcus Lee. Lee is from Baton Rouge, where Southern is located. Sean Williams for three. He's now two of 11 on trays this year. Sharpshooter from East Carolina. Made over 73s both seasons at ECU. Step in three for Bradford. Five off the bench for the grad transfer from Bourbon A, Illinois. So impressed with your pronunciation of the French, well, you know, of the French, uh, French name there. Coach, it's my neck of the woods a little bit. A foul away from the ball is called on Southern. This one goes on Micah Bradford. You're looking stroke right here. What's Bourbon A, coach? About 20 minutes from Chicago? Yeah, tw 20 minutes, maybe 20 minutes from, maybe 15 miles south of the city. And Bradley Bourbon A High School. Mm -hmm. Free throw woes continue. That's the first miss this year for Aore Koachea. Bradford again, a strong move to the rim, and he's going to shoot two free throws. Boy, Micah Bradford looks good, though, doesn't he? The Valpo transfer. Five off the bench. He's a role player for the Crusaders. Only scored four points last Saturday in a 20-point loss at Murray State. He's already surpassed that in a few minutes. Southern by a pair. Eight minutes in here at the Pan Am. Quick turnaround for the Aggies after a loss at UTEP 48 hours ago. The Aggies trail Southern by two. 
It has been well documented. The Aggies have been really battling the injury bug to start the year. A lot of preseason injuries. A.J. Harris, injured finger. Wilfred Lakai out for the year with a knee injury. Clayton Henry, thumb injury. Harris will return before anybody, it looks like. He could be back around mid-December, maybe earlier, depending on how he heals. And Henry could be back in our conference play, but I think it's safe to say at the very latest he'll be back when conference play begins. Henry, according to Coach Jans, had the best offseason out of everybody, and he said he was turning into his best perimeter defender and was also shooting the basketball very well. So that was a huge blow. We know Harris is the quarterback, and Lakai was going to have an impact, but Henry was turning into a very good player. Yes, and uh, you know he showed, showed flashes of greatness last year, and I think we, I was expecting big things this year. So big blow for the Aggies. How about Micah Bradford off the bench? Five for Southern. 6-1 guard. Transferred in this year from Valparaiso. Shivers transferred in from Siena. Kajahovic transferred in from Cal State Fullerton. So Sean Woods really going the transfer route. And Bradford utilizing that grad transfer rule as he makes one out of two. What do you need to see here for the Aggie offense? Well, I think, I think one of the things that happens early in the season is players will play tentative, trying too hard to do what the coach wants. And, and at, at some point, you know, the, the, it's just a roadmap, the offense. It's not, it's, not the, you know, it's not set in stone. And it's just a matter of figuring out what, where they can score and where they can't. Ivana Oreko Echea draws the foul. Good turn there on the spin move. So I, I, you know, to get back to your, to get back to your question, Adam, as, as we as we see the big fella get the foul here, it, you know, I think at this point there's no one on there's no one on the Aggie team who's ignoring Chris Jans or not respecting Chris Jans. They're probably trying too hard to do what he wants, and at some point they'll have to get confidence. And, and at this point, early in the season, it winds up being uh, they're still thinking about the offense instead of reacting and doing it instinctively. So it's just a matter of ironing things out. I think Sean Williams who's in his first year in the program is a perfect example of that. Trying too hard to do what the coaches want him to do. Probably thinking too much on the floor instead of just playing. Yes, nobody, nobody wants to be seen as taking a bad shot or being selfish. But I see this, this time period with AJ hurt that I'd like to see Sean Williams step up and, and show he can score like he did at East Carolina. Southern has made three straight shots from the field. And off to Bradford. Goes away for the ball screen set by Williams. Hangs in the air, misses the jumper. And a foul is going to be called on Johnny McCants on the rebound. Johnny can't believe it. He's stunned. Numbers-wise, the Aggies rebounded the ball pretty well Tuesday, Coach. They were plus six in rebound margin at Utah. No, and when I said they looked sluggish, they, they were they were quick to the ball. They got a lot of loose balls, a lot of rebounds. They just looked at, looked out of sync offensively. Because of the foul, the shot clock resets to 20 instead of 30. That's one of those new rule changes this year in both men's and women's basketball. Weak side rebound for Queen off the miss by Lee. Nine plus in, the Aggies trail by a pair. Three of 11 for the field, 0 of six on threes. They go down low to Aore Koachea and his skip out, looking for Queen is deflected out of bounds by Darius Williams. The Aggies saw him a year ago. He was with the Bakersfield Roadrunners. Averaged two points and two rebounds per game for head coach Rod Barnes there. Playing his final year collegiately at Southern. Under 10 for Queen, slipping again. He's done that twice. Ivan Aore Kochea. Well, it's a, it's a, it takes timing and, and smarts, and uh, Aore Kochea has that in spades. Lee in the corner, defended by Terrell Brown. Freshman Delore Johnson. Out of Houston on the baseline, a jumper is too strong. Snatched in by Brown, he wants to push. 
All right, Coach is calling for it. They don't give it to him. Trev Queen for three. First made three for the Yankees. He was hit. No foul is called. Or is a foul call? Yeah, I think it was on the box out after the shot. So Queen will not get a free throw. But it looks like a foul was called on Southern on the box out here. Sam Mack checks in for Southern for the first time. Well, this is how I know I'm getting old, Adam. I tried to recruit Sam Mack's father. Chicago native, right? Yeah, Thornridge, Thornridge High School. He was about six foot four, the dad, and, uh, and was only 16 as a senior. But boy, could he play. He wound up being a great college player. And I think Ed was briefly in the NBA, played overseas for a long time. And off to Queen, mid post extended. Back door to Queen, and he finger rolls it home. Timeout, Sean Woods. They call a foul as well. Queen was ready to shoot his free throw. He's going to have to shoot it after the timeout. Great fight by the big man, Ivan Aure Koachea. That's how you jumpstart the offense. Well, that's right, and Micah Bradford, the fifth-year senior, turned his head to the ball. That's his first mistake of the night. And uh, Trevor and Queen got a layup out of it. 16 to 11, the Aggies on an 8-0 run over the previous 225. Do you I've, sense him playing with more confidence this year? I felt like he always did. And there's the mayor, Ken there, Miyagashima, who just yes. won his re-election. He's, he's, he's playing with confidence. Is, is that who you mean? Ken Miyagashima, <laughs> yeah, he, what a great job he's done. And he's always at the Aggie games. Uh, but uh, Trevlin Queen, yes, because remember last year, he came out kind of tentative. But he didn't get eligible for Chris Jans until Christmas time because he was a transfer. But, uh, but uh, and, and, and each game, he got better and better. And I think maybe that'll happen with the rest of the Aggies this year. That's probably a good example to think about how, it took, how long it took Trevlin Queen to adapt last year. Averaging a team high 17 and a half points per game in the first two. Trying to complete the three point play, and he does. Nine-oh, Aggie run, and a foul offensive before the inbound is called Arn Southern for shoving off. Arn C.J. Poppett, who was able to draw that one. Inbound goes to Aure Koeche. The Aggies working through him right now. Turns to his right, stays patient, and he flips it home. So sort of a lot of up and unders from, from Yvonne Orokochea. Sadler, 10 to shoot, ball screen from Williams. Offensive foul, Sean Buchanan drew it. He does that at least once a game, coach. Well, Sa Jaden Sadler, sort of, he's kind of lost the plot a little bit. He's getting a little too emotionally involved. Watch him push off here. And maybe a little bit of acting from Sean Buchanan, but it was a push off by Sadler, it appeared. Big thanks to Marquis Pettigrew for checking in with us. They're going to see if something flagrant happened on that play on I, the offensive foul that was drawn by Buchanan. I didn't think it was. Let's watch again here. It didn't seem flagrant to me. It was sort of a... No. no. It wasn't, wasn't Nothing much. there. No. This should be a very quick re review with Winston Stith and Bob Staffen.
And again, the end coach is just really good defense there by Sean Buchanan. As usual, right? And just as we suspected, not a flagrant foul. When we talk about rules changing, of course, Sean Buchanan has to be more productive, but he still needs to do those things well. That's why he's on the floor for defense, to get the Aggies in their offense. He makes a play like that at least once a game, sometimes twice. Yes. And often at crucial times. Yep. Oh. And off to Brown. And a moving screen is called away from the ball on Aore Koachea. Number two on him, so he's going to have to sit. And our first look tonight at the big man out of Philly, Will McNair. He looks like a senior. He's only a freshman. He's a red shirt, 6'10", 265. He looks the part, doesn't he's he? A, he's a big fella, the Philadelphia kid. Played pretty good minutes on Tuesday against UTEP. Was really good against Western New Mexico in the season opener. He's averaging just over five points a game. Sam Mack from Chicago. Here's Oso Wilson, high low feed for Williams. And the foul is called on Will McNair. He's still learning, and he's learning on the fly. Chris Jans has been very vocal about the fact that McNair and or Robert Brown has to play key minutes this year. We are 12 minutes into the first half. The Aggies trying to pull away from Southern. Aggies 19, Jaguars 11. Here at home game number two. An 11-0 run for the Aggies. A scoreless drought of almost four minutes for Southern. Eight points for Trev Queen, seven for Aore Koachea. And now the offensive struggles have started for Sean Woods' Jaguars. 12 minutes in. Nice crowd here tonight at the Pan Am Center. Aggies have been so good in this building, 119 and 12 at home <laughs> since 2011 2012. That's quite a record over the last 10 year period. About this stat right now, Southern with 13 fouls. The Aggies have committed only five fouls. Shivers outside for Bradford, who's been good off the bench for Sean Woods. Two to shoot for Shivers, long two out of the corner. Queen rips in the rebound. Buchanan on the spin in the corner for Brown. A step in three is too strong. Pop at the offensive rebound. Queen will launch a three. One of nine on threes for the Aggies. They were six of 26 on Tuesday in El Paso. Ten to shoot for Southern. Radford picked up his dribble. Now in the center circle for Shivers. Three to shoot for Southern. Shivers again, fall away off the heel. And this is going to be a foul on the Aggies. How much of this, Coach, is Southern struggling offensively, or how much of this is the Aggie defense playing well? Well, probably a bit of both. And, and I think the Aggies came up key, keyed up after after El Paso, and they've know they've got to get things ahead in the right direction quickly. But Sean Woods is an, as you mentioned earlier, he's an experienced coach. He's no, you know, he's been very successful in Division One. Robert Brown in for the first time this week. Did not play Tuesday. He has the same feel that Will McNair does in that he's a true center. He's a, a true old-fashioned big guy. Chris Jans has said this numerous times. He said the bottom line is one of those two or both, Brown and McNair, will have to develop quicker than expected. That's right. I think that's exactly right. And I, I also think it's true, and I know Chris Jans, no, no, what, what, Chris Jans has nothing to learn from me, but, but he'll, they'll have to play. They won't get better sitting there. He's going to have to throw them in the game like he's done tonight. Brown, when he came to campus, was much heavier. He dropped at least 60, 70 pounds the last couple of years, and 
has really changed his body. Here's Brown, a low block extended. Inside, outside to Buchanan. Now to Brown in the high post. Very athletic, big man. He's going to work. Right-handed hook. Bounces off. Looked pretty good, though, didn't it? Not a bad move. Yeah. Now he's trying to defend Williams. Extra pass to Bradford. Mismatch here as he's guarded by Bobbitt. Williams defending Shivers. Now Bobbitt has to guard Lee. Southern will try to take advantage. Lee for three, and he swishes it in. Off the ball screen. And that breaks a long scoreless drought for Southern. Field goal wise, that is. 19 to 15. CJ Bobbitt on the bounce, and he's intercepted. Streaking ahead is Lee. Bounces back for Bradford. Dump off. Layup no good for Osa Wilson. And a foul is called on the rebound. That's just not, not CJ's thing. And th th maybe this is the, the Chua factor, is that maybe maybe CJ Bobbitt's trying to do too much offensively. You know, what, what he did before, he was just like an assassin. He would just wait for his spot, wait for his spot, and then drill the three. And maybe without without Big Eli in there, he's, he's not going to be freed up to do that. And a foul was called on Brown, his first for the Aggies. And Wilson gets one out of two. Damari Burns comes in, replaces Wilson for Southern. A turnover by C.J. Bobbitt on the previous possession was the first Aggie turnover. Now Williams throws it away. He's trying to draw a charge. The layup is good for Darius Williams. And Southern pulls within one. Southern putting on a press. Nearly stolen again. It's loose and it's picked up by Williams and he has to slow it down. We haven't seen this bunch very often this year. Brown, Queen, Williams, Bobbitt, and Buchanan. On 20, two, Williams knew it right when he threw it. Yeah. To his credit, he tried drawing a charge right after. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, he's still, he's still, uh, Sean Williams seems like he's still got cobwebs on his shoes from the transfer, I don't know, he just doesn't, doesn't seem confident. Like I thought, I just assumed a guy who scored a lot of points at East Carolina would come in blistering uh, with confidence. Yeah, you, I think a lot you, of people compared him before he even played a minute to JoJo Zamora. Well, that's right. Uh, and we haven't, we haven't talked about Evan Gilliard yet, who the, who the Aggies have sitting out the transfer from UTEP. But I expect Gilliard to come out with guns blazing next uh, next fall. Brown gets the roll. Aggie six of ten on free throws. An improvement from Tuesday when they were two of eleven. Defense has still been there for the Aggie. Smothering perimeter defense. Buchanan's all over Bradford. And traveling is called on Burns, who just checked in moments ago. Freshman from New Orleans. Oh, watch me take their little steps. Williams maneuvers into the front court. The Aggies haven't made a field goal in almost four minutes. Reverse to Queen from the wing. He's off the mark. McCann's trying to tip it out. He does, but it's out of bounds into the Southern bench. The Aggies now one of 10 on three. So seven of 36 on threes in the two games this week. We know Queen's a better shooter than this. We know Williams is a better shooter than this. Terrell Brown as well. We haven't seen Brown in a handful of minutes. Williams crossover dribble. The defense there for Robert Brown. 
the bench acknowledges that. Aure Koachea is on the bench with two personals. Pull up jumper for Lee. McCants the board. Brown working very hard down low, fighting for positioning with Burns. Buchanan on the sideline. Brown's calling for it. Buchanan on the dribble drive. The spin, right-handed floater is no good. But Sean Buchanan will shoot two when we come back from break. A little sluggish offensively. The Aggies 37% for the field. Just one of 10 from three. Yet they lead by three. Trying to go to two and one with a win tonight against Southern. Second all-time meeting, the Aggies in the Southern Jaguars. Southern from the SWAC. They just honored the WAC regular season champion, Aggie Volleyball team on the floor. They won earlier today, improved to 24 and three. The first meeting between the Aggies and Southern came in 2011. Check out these highlights, coach. Ponja C, acrobatic layup, he could really leap. And then Wendell McKinnis, maybe one of the best rebounders in program history, right here, scoring for two against Southern. He could play, couldn't he? Boy, could he jump, but he was tough. 91-66 was the final score back in 2011. Daniel Mullings was on that team. We see Chile the Poway as well. That was a good looking team. Very now I'm getting nostalgic. It wasn't that long ago. But yeah, that was a, it was a great team. It's funny though, every single time I talk about rebounding, I think about Jamario Jones. You talk about Wendell McKinnis, who was a great rebounder, one of the best in program history, but if you talk about rebounding nowadays, in program history, you have to bring up J.J. He, Jamario Jones was an incredible player, and he's, he's been in and out of the NBA for the, la for the last year and a half, hasn't he? Yeah, G League right now with the yeah. Bucks. Yeah. Twenty-one, eighteen. the score. Southern coming off a loss against Murray State over the weekend. The Aggies coming off a 15-point setback against rival UTEP on Tuesday. This is a big week for the Aggies. They're going to have number 19, Arizona, on Sunday. I know Chris Jans doesn't want to talk about Arizona yet until this one is done, but we can talk about it a bit. <laughs> just the Aggies have just a great chance. Yeah, if you don't tell them at the end of the game. True. Uh, great opportunity on Sunday following this one. Yeah, that's right. And it's, a, it's a noon game. It wouldn't, I don't know if there are tickets available. It's not such a long, it's not such a bad drive over to Tucson. First free throw was made by Sean Buchanan. One of the leaders of this team, a senior out of Durant, Mississippi. Third and final season with the Aggies. Speaking of G League, his older brother Shaq, who played at Murray State, by the way, is now in the G League as well huh. with the Grizzlies. Traveling is called on Bradford. Trapping defense right in front of Sean Woods, the head coach for Southern, and he does not agree. He's playing his case to Marquise Pettigrew. Well, they're gonna have a little conference here. And now they're going to say it's Southern ball. I'm not sure what the Chris Jans is stunned. Inadvertent yeah, inadvertent whistle by Winston Stith, apparently. But then he signaled travel. I can see inadvertent whistle, but then there was a signal for travel. And there might have been traveling. Wow. Hard to know what they're thinking. Feet were shuffled, for sure, for Bradford. Southern will try to take advantage. Great wing denial by Buchanan. Now Bradford catches. Under 10 to shoot again for the Jaguars. Ball screen for Williams. High hedge. Double team now for McCants. Gets his hands on it. Perfection on defense on the high hedge for Johnny McCants. Buchanan to Queen. Takes the pass to Williams. Popping out is Will McNair. Big man slips. McCants almost throws it away. Foul was called in the process on LaMarcus Lee. I know last year's team was 
probably one of the best in the country at just being crisp with passes, Coach. And yes. We haven't seen that so far We haven't far seen tonight. it yet, no. Sean Williams will shoot two. The Aggies in the double bonus the rest of the way in the half. 13 a game last year at East Carolina. 12 a game as a freshman. Former American Athletic Conference Freshman of the Year. That's a good league, too. UConn is in that league. Tulane, Cincinnati. Lee breaks the pressure. He goes to Burns, and Burns is fouled on his way up. With 2.49 left here in the half, the Yankees ahead by seven. First free throw for Burns, a freshman from New Orleans. Makes it a six point game. Saw this on film coming in, but there's one thing that we know about Sean Wood's program right now is they're gonna play hard. And they have yes. played very hard in the first 17 plus minutes. That's right. Both free throws good for Burns. Some token pressure here for the Jaguars. We'll see if it phases the Aggies. A lot of good ball handlers on the floor, including Johnny McCants, who can handle it. Buchanan will initiate the offense. Defended by Lee. Williams on the attack, lost the handle. Was looking for a pull-up jumper. No numbers, behind the back pass is thrown away. Ill-advised pass by LaMarcus Lee. I don't think Sean Woods will like that too much. Not sure who that was intended for, but. The Aggies haven't made a field goal in six minutes and 30 seconds. McCants. Stays patient, lays it in. Johnny McCants, his first deuce. Defense. 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 Radford swatted away by the big ball. Will McNair, all the way from Philly. <laughs> Chris Trianz has said a few times in interviews that down the road he feels like a lot of coaches are going to say, how the heck did they get that guy? Yeah. He feels like McNair has that potential down the road. A three is good from the wing for Micah Bradford. Southern pulls within four. Bradford now has 11 off the Southern bench. He only had four last Saturday against Murray State. McCann's back door to Williams, and he's bumped. The Aggies are shooting two foul shots the rest of the way. Williams misses a free throw. 88% free throw shooter in each of his two seasons at East Carolina. A lot of minutes so far for Brown and McNair. Aure Koachea has two personals. He's been on the bench for a while. And Williams splits the pair. Streaking ahead is Lee, runs over Buchanan, who draws his second charge tonight.
And they teed up Sean Woods after the call. So a technical foul called on a second year Southern head coach, Sean Woods. Technical free throw is good for Sean Williams, who's the best free throw shooter on the team. I felt like it was a charge. I think it was the right call. I think he might have been upset about the positioning by the official, potentially. Saying that it wasn't his call to make? Maybe, yeah. 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 Aggies able to capitalize on the technical. Isaiah Rollins will come in for the first time. Sophomore from Louisiana. Replaces LaMarcus Lee. And the Aggies can make this a huge possession. Head by seven, final minute plus. And Buchanan travels with it. It was the near side official, Bob Staffen. Staffen, who was all over it. Winston Stith was right there. He was the second one to make the call. So it's Southern Bowl, a minute five left here in the first half. First minutes in a while for Amel Kajahobish, who applies the ball screen to get Bradford free. Radford lost the handle, scooped it up. Kaja Hovish underneath, can't bank it in, but he will shoot two. Foul is on Brown, that is number two on him. So two on Brown. Two on Aure Koachea as well. A couple of front court players for the Aggies. Kajahovich drains the free throw. Big man from Waterloo, Iowa. Transferred in from Cal State Fullerton. A nice touch for a big fella. Made a three earlier. Looked yeah. pretty good. Two possession game right now. Free throw is good. The Aggies have led by as many as eight in this first half. They lead by five right now. Buchanan runs the point, looking for Brown. Offensive foul on Brown. Trying to post up on the big fella. And he just picked up his third. Well, pretty quick turnaround. You know, the Aggies had a chance to go up 10 at, at, at the half on the technical. And now things, now instead, Southern could cut it to, to three or four. Uh, Cut it to three or two. Defense. 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 Micah Bradford Defense. moves across midcourt for Southern. The Aggies have held the Jacks to 35% shooting in this half. About a five second difference. Game clock, shot clock. High hedge, McCants, no call. Down low, Kajahovich can't catch it. Stolen by Johnny McCants. Seven seconds, and Buchanan tosses it away. Rollins, a layup, no good. Williams stripped away. And that's the end of one half. Not a pretty finish. Was not a great offensive first half of the Yagis. Pretty good defense, though. Holding Southern to a poor shooting half. And the Aggies lead 30 to 25 at the end of one half. Halftime activities after this from the Pan Am Center. Neither team shot the ball very well in the first 20 minutes. Southern 33%, the Aggies 40%. Big difference in threes. And the Aggies, I guess overall coach, shooting the ball better for the free throw line than they did on Tuesday. Well, that's right, uh, thank, thank goodness for that. But yeah, they're, they're still working out kinks, I think, and they're still sort of dealing with, uh, you know, dealing with the new players and the injuries and trying to, trying to iron out the offense. Turnover number pretty low, only six for the Yagis after 20 minutes of action. Trev Queen has eight to pace the Yagis. Bradford has 11. 
off the bench for Southern. He's been the big surprise so far. Micah Bradford, the grad transfer from Valpo. Valparaiso, yeah, and from, from Bourbon, Illinois. He, now, he seemed, he seemed completely comfortable. The Aggies picked to win the WAC this year. Southern picked to finish sixth in the SWAC. Prairie View a and picked to win that conference. Texas Southern is usually one of the better teams in the SWAC. That's where Zach Lofton was before he came to the Aggies a few years ago. And Prairie View A&M is actually where new Aggie assistant coach Corey Parker played his college ball. He played at Prairie View A&M, and they are picked to win the SWAC this year. What do you need to see from the Yankees, both offensively and defensively, coach, in the final 20? Well, I think offensively, I'd like to see him re relax a little bit and get the ball inside to, to, to big Ivan Orokochea. And, and, and defensively, there just can't be, uh, you know, there, there's no let-ups. One thing about Chris Jans, you don't ever see him let up. No. Uh, he's incredibly intense, and, and I think he's frustrated when, when the Yankees uh, let up a little bit and give up a three-pointer. I think it, it, it drives him a little bit crazy, as well it should. Another player, Coach, we didn't see a whole lot of in the first half was Jabari Rice. He also has two fouls. I'm not sure if he wasn't playing because of the foul situation or if he just wasn't playing because Chris Jans didn't put him on the floor. There's Rice. He's the guy who scored 21 of the opener. The Aggies have raved about his progress during the offseason, and he only played five minutes in the first half. And you figure with Henry out and with Harris out, Rice should have a bigger role. Well, you would think so. You, you would think so. And, and that's why, I, I, you know, I, I think this is the time for, for uh, Jabari Rice and Sean Williams to step, out, step up with Clay Henry and A.J. Harris hurt. Sean Williams played 11 minutes in the first half. There's Sean Woods, the head coach of Southern. Now a peek into the Aggie bench where Christians is fired up. This was supposed to be the year. You had Henry coming back, you had Harris coming back, you had Queen coming back, Brown, Buchanan, Bobbitt, Aureko, and Shane. The list goes on and on. And it can still be the year but the injuries have put a wrinkle in the plans, at least to start. Already, yes, with 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 the, with the loss in El Paso, and uh, I, I think that's very true. And 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 Aggies again. This tonight is not over by any means, and they'll have a huge test on Saturday, at I mean, Sunday at Arizona, and then the Lobos come in. And there's still enough here, even without the injured guys, to have a lot of success early. There's still enough pieces in place. That's right. First possession for Southern offensively in half two here in the gold jerseys on the road, looking for a huge road win. Jaden Sadler out of Aberdeen, Maryland, on the dribble drive working against Buchanan. And it's gonna be on the floor, no continuation. The basket will not count. Foul is on Buchanan, his first personal. Shivers will inbound. Bounces into Amel Kajahovich. Right back to Shivers. Transfer from Siena. Made 36 combined starts in two years for a good Siena program. He's blocked from behind by Trev Queen. Queen to Bobbitt in transition. Aure Koachea, the offensive rebound. He is hammered down low. Lamarcus Lee was all over him. And the foul on Lee is going to be number four already. There's a number of players with foul trouble for Southern. Hmm. Well, it didn't take long for Sean Woods to put Micah Bradford back in the game. Mm -hmm. Lee will have to sit for a while. Bradford, great first half. Inbound entry is slapped away, intended for C.J. Bobbitt. They're going to say that was the third, it looks like, on Lee. So three on Lee. Nonetheless, he will sit. Also three fouls on Shivers, Sadler, and Darius Williams for Southern. Robert Brown has three for the Aggies. Nobody else has more than two. 
Quiet first half for Terrell Brown. High low pass to Aore Koachea. Kick out Brown. Extra pass in the corner for Queen. They sling it out to Buchanan. Buchanan bounces down low to Aore Koachea. And he gets the mini hook to go. Boy, so solid fundamentally. They're just great footwork. Team high nine points now for Ivan Aore Koachea. Buchanan might be the best perimeter defender for the Aggies. Three for Peja Hovish is short. He made one earlier. Rare miss from three for Southern. They're now four of six on triples. Post entry is kicked away by Jaden Sadler. Terrell Brown, coach, did not score in the first half, and he led the Aggies in scoring last year, a year when the Aggies had so much balance. They need him to score, that's well, he, for sure. He, he's, he's battling an injury, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, he, he looked tentative down in El Paso as well. Brown did score 10, but really had to work for 10 on Tuesday. Down low to Aore Koachea with the left hand and the finish. Plus one. Maybe get, this is where the offense will come from. I, I don't remember ever seeing a, a, an Aggie as smart as Ivan Orokochea inside. He just knows how, to, knows how to get his position. He can use either hand. He can flex his biceps. <laughs> Aure Koachea, one of three on free throws tonight. Big man from Madrid, Spain. This is short. Darius Williams, the Bakersfield transfer, pulls in the rebound. Southern shooting 30%, yet they're still in the game on the road, and Sean Buchanan draws his third charge. And, and Micah Bradford has run sort of hot and cold for the, for the Southern team, and I, I, I do think part of it, but, but, but you're right, Buchanan's always in the right place defensively. Terrell Brown ahead for Buchanan. The Aggies barely get it across. Brown's only attempted two shots. The Aggies go right back to Aore Koachea. Fakes left, goes right. Hook shot no good. It's tapped to him. And he tosses back out to Brown. Buchanan on the dribble drive. Tough floater, no good. Aore Koachea trying to grab it, and he can't do so on the baseline. Well, I thought, I thought Aore Koachea had, a, he had a, another shot but he had already taken a couple and, and unselfishly passed it back out. What a worker he is. Mm -hmm. Lead of nine for the Yankees, their biggest lead here tonight. And he led by five at halftime. Slipping is Johnson. Still squirts out, though, to Bradford. Dribble drive for Williams, a pitch out to the big man out of the corner. Hovish misses. Yankees push. Wide open is Queen. Offensive rebound, Ivan Aore Koachea. Back to the line for two more. He's relentless. I was, I was certain Queen was going to make that, but, but I'm glad, uh, I'm glad B Big Ivan was not certain. Grab that rebound. Aure Koachea has struggled from the free throw line. He is now two of five after that make. Last season, he was a 70% free throw shooter. Has a good stroke for a big man. That's right. Which is, has plagued the Aggies over the years, big men who can't make free throws, but, but he's not one of them usually. He was on that last shot. Three minutes in, Aggies ahead by double figures now. Pull up for Bradford, slips off. Good box out for C.J. Bobbitt down low. Terrell Brown in transition. Bingo, there you go. The first points for Brown here tonight. Led the Aggies in scoring a season ago, 11 per game. He was the only Aggie who averaged double figures a season ago. Johnson for two. 
Johnson counters with a basket. Aggies ahead by 11. And a foul is called away from the ball. This will be on Darius Williams, and he's in some big time foul trouble. That is going to be his fourth. So four now on Williams, and four on Sadler. Because of the foul, the shot clock resets to 20. Brown is fouled on his way to the hoop. That's foul number six already on Southern, not even four minutes in to this second half. And they fouled a bunch in the first half as well, Coach. Yeah, and that's one of the rules this year, right, Adam, for our, for our viewers at home. If there's an offensive rebound, it doesn't reset. It only resets yep. to 20. Yeah, offensive rebound or a foul. Terrell Brown, I guess, was past the end line, or did he maybe bounce he, it off the maybe, end line? Maybe he stepped on the line. That's an unforced error on the Aggies. Either way, he turned it over. Inbound goes to Oh, he bounced it. Yeah, he bounced Burns. it on Yeah, that. he bounced in the end line. Yeah. And now a foul away from the ball again. This one will go on McNair. Not a whole lot of flow to this one. The first on Will McNair as Christian still searches for a big man who can provide some big minutes off the Aggie bench. 38-27. The Aggies have built an 11-point advantage early on in half two. Good energy in the building tonight. Ivan Aore Koachea playing well. The Aggies lead by 11, four minutes and two seconds into the second half here at the Pan Am Center. Adam Young joined by Aggie assistant coach Russ Bradbird here tonight. And coach, the Aggies have outscored the Jags 8-2 to two in this half. Have you seen some changes for the Aggies offensively? Yeah, they've, they've come out with much more confidence. They seem more sure of what they're doing. And they've had their way with Southern University. It's a good test for them. I think Southern University will do better in the league than the coaches poll has predicted before the season started. And Ivan Aore Koachea, who is now staying out of foul trouble, has played well to start this half. He's had a very nice floor game tonight. We still haven't seen a whole lot of Jabari Rice, though, which is surprising. No, and, and as, as you mentioned earlier, we, we felt like his, his, uh, his ability to score was going to be a very big deal with the injuries that Aggies have had. So I don't know if the, the, the Aggies have been wrecked a little bit by a little bit of sickness, a little bit of injury, and there's no telling what's, uh, if, if Jabari's not feeling well or what the story is. A little more Terrell Brown in this half. Didn't play a ton in the first half. He just made his first basket of the game. Remember, Brown is battling an injury, still playing through it. Aure Koachea has had an ankle issue. He's been playing through it. Which could be part of the reason why the Aggies haven't been all that sharp is they don't have a lot of these guys practicing every single day because of some injuries. Jumper is off the mark for Burns, and the rebound is snatched in by Queen. McCants, McNair, Queen, Brown, and Sean Williams. Williams on the handoff right here. McNair, high post. Brown in the corner to Williams. They're looking for McNair, but he wasn't open. Under 10 to shoot for Terrell Brown. Williams out of the corner. Crossover dribble, long two. Crashing hard was McCants, and it's last touch by Southern. It's Aggie ball, shot clock resets to 20. Well, Sean Williams didn't make that one, but that was my favorite thing that he's done so far this season. He, he played with a little confidence. He made a little move and put the ball up. That's, that's what I think we all expected him to do this year. His reverse layup is partially blocked. McCants is smothered in between two Southern players. Possession arrow will point to the Aggies, and Chris Jans is wondering how a foul wasn't called because McCants was smothered. Yeah, he thought a foul should have been called on the reach around there by Micah Bradford. And he might have been right. Shot clock under 10 again. Queen going to work. And 
And McNair is bailed out. He's going to shoot two. One left on the shot clock. Queen never touched the rim, so the Yaggies catch a break. McNair will shoot two. It's kind of a strange play by with Trev Queen there. But I think about how lucky uh, Will McNair is to have uh, have Ivan Orokochea to sort of apprentice under a guy who really, you know, really just an experienced, uh, exper the experienced Spaniard to, to teach, you know, to teach him the ropes, and a pretty good coaching yep. staff. Mm -hmm. Young man out of Philly, Martin Luther King High School, rims out the second free throw. Brendan Brooks is in for the first time for Southern. He skips a pass near side for Sadler. Down low to Burns, back out for Brooks. He'll heave a three, missed it short. Rebound on the back side for Brown, ahead to McCants. Queen back to Johnny. Good ball movement here to Williams. Maggie's moving well for Queen out of the wing. There you go, outstanding ball movement. Yes, and I think, I think that's that's exactly what the Aggies are looking for: is to get the ball moving, but but not to get locked into the, you know, locked into not looking at the basket. The Aggie lead grows to 15. The pull-up jumper banks in for Burns. Back door for Queen, and he lays it in. Almost an alley-oop. Queen came down with it. Five in a row for Trev. Euro stepping a layup on the other end for Johnson. And that'll make Chris Chance furious make when the crazy. players don't get back. Yes, and not, to not be able to get back down the court. And now Chris Chance wants a timeout. And he will. Uh, the Aggies never got back defensively, and Chris Chance not happy. 13-37 left. Second half action, 44-31 Aggies. Good crowd tonight here at the Pan Am Center. The Aggies looking for their second win of the season during a busy week, just 48 hours after playing UTEP in El Paso on Tuesday night. Time now for our New Mexico State student athlete to the game. Today we recognize Ryan Olson from Aggie Baseball and Kayla Gerhardt from Aggie Swim and Dive. Olsen is a 387 student majoring in agricultural economics, while Gerhardt has a 3A GPA and she majors in nursing. New Mexico State University Be Bold Shape the Future. I know you love this segment, Coach. We started this this year. Student athlete of the game, both male and female during each telecast. I think it's a great idea. Great idea, isn't it? And I know Mario Mochi has always been, he's always been. O overly concerned with, in, in the best ways, overly concerned with academics, and that's exactly how it should be. And I, I think Chris Jans is the same way. Look who's at the game tonight. Brooke Salas, former Aggie women's basketball star, second best scorer in school history. She doesn't look too happy. <laughs> Maybe she wants the Aggies to be winning by more. Aggies are up 13 with 13 minutes to go. Well, there's a good shot for our crew. Jabari Rice has some ice on his hand. So that's probably why. Oh, well, there it is. He has only played five minutes in the game. They just can't catch a break, can they? Injury that's, that's after right. injury. My goodness. So some big minutes for Sean Williams, the newcomer. C.J. Bobbitt on the turn is fouled towards the rim. Bobbitt goes stumbling towards the seats. He's going to shoot one of the bonus. The Aggies already in the bonus. It is not a shooting foul. So one and one for C.J. Bobbitt. So you have Lakai out, Henry out, Harris out. Joseph, Dejour Joseph was battling a shoulder injury during the offseason. He is in uniform tonight but has not played. Now Rice has ice on his left hand. Aure Koachea is battling an ankle injury. Brown's battling some injuries. I mean, it is one thing after another. The Aggies have now attempted 25 free throws. They have made 17 of those. 
Brendan Brooks. All over him is Sean Williams. Hand off to Sadler. Now the exchange to Johnson. Good defensive stand for the Aggies so far. Through the legs and then caught by Burns. Seven to shoot for Brooks. Picks up his dribble. Kaja Hovish throws it away, then regained by Johnson. Shot clock violation. No change in possession. Great defensive effort in that stand. Well, that, that's, that'll make Chris Jans happy. It made me happy. The defense has been good tonight, Coach. Has it been? That's right. Yeah, and it, and it, was, it, it wasn't bad in El Paso either. Let's put it this way. Tuesday, the Aggies probably defended well enough to win. That's right. They just couldn't score enough points to win. And when they're, you know, two for ten or whatever they were from the free throw line, that's not much Chris Jans can do to save him on that. Brown collects the miss. Check that. Queen collects the miss from Brown. Then he lost it, diving for it, rolling on the hardwood. A tussle near the foul line. Great effort by Bone. In possession points to Southern. Aure Koachea comes back in, replaces McCants. That was a good look for Terrell Brown. Yes, he normally would make that one. The Aggies have outscored the Jags 16 to 6 here in half two. Scoreless drought of almost three minutes for Southern. High hedge for CJ Bobbitt. Shivers on the dribble drive. Pitches it outside to Sandler. Teardrop short. Trying to grab his own miss. And a foul is called on the Aggies on the rebound. And it's on to CJ Bobbitt. Number two on CJ. Bradford triggers. Into the corner for Sadler. Quiet half for Bradford, who has not scored in this half after scoring 11 off the bench in the first 20 minutes. Thanks the handoff, still has it. Four to shoot. Mid post for Kajahovic. His jump hook spins off, and Buchanan leaps high for the rebound. They're looking for Aure Koachea. I thought, that was the right, yeah, I, I thought that was the right call. He hopped a little bit. Turnover on the Aggies, their ninth. They're a third in half number two. But the Aggies have outscored the Jags by 10 in the second half. They lead by 15 here at the Pan Am Center. Adam Young alongside the former Aggie assistant coach, Russ Bradford. Glad you could join us here tonight. And a big happy birthday to Heidi Mocha, who's right there enjoying this basketball game tonight. The wife of the athletics director, Marty Mocha. It's her birthday today. Is there anything more romantic than an Aggie game? I would say no. I think he did the right thing, bringing, exactly. bring, bringing his lovely wife to the Aggie game. And I guess we can call her the first lady of Aggie athletics, right? Yes, we certainly can. Huge Aggie supporter. By the Her way, we, husband Mario doing a great job. I have to say every year, Adam, because it's true every year, Mike Jordan, the, the, the volleyball, the, our Aggie volleyball coach, has done an incredible yep. job again. It was just year after year. He's just very, very good. He's got great kids that are good students. And it's just, I'm just so impressed with him. He's been here. He's just as solid as can be. And uh, I was happy they honored the volleyball team at uh, halftime. Coach, they're 24 and 3. They have won 16 straight matches. Yeah. And One he, of the best stats, I think, in the entire athletics department is Aggie Volleyball has won 20-plus matches in 16 of the previous 18 years. It's hard to be that consistent. Yeah, he's just consistently very, very good, and he's, he just does it with grace and dignity. He's a, he's a solid guy. Well, do we have a Sean Buchanan charge counter? <laughs> well, there, there, there it is. We should have some sort of... Uh, you know, credit card company could sponsor him as the uh, uh, taking the charge. 
technically that was not a charge, but you know what? He's always as getting his body. Charge, he's yeah. getting his body in the way. He's just completely selfless. You won't find a much better ambassador for this program too than Sean Buchanan. One of Chris Jans's first recruits. Transfer from Northeast Mississippi Juco. They'll get the chance to go close to home later on this year in December when the Aggies play Mississippi State. And he expects to have a lot of family and friends at that game. Biggest lead for the Aggies. They lead by 17. Scoreless drought of well over three minutes now for Southern. Shivers was fighting for positioning. He finally found it and drew a foul. Foul was called on Trev Queen. Number two on Trev. And they're going to say it is a shooting foul for Shivers. Transfer from Siena. Eight points per game last season for Siena College. Historically a pretty good program, Siena. Isn't it, Coach? That's right, yeah. He's been quiet tonight, though, hasn't he? Just one point for Shivers all night after that first made free throw, and then he missed the second. Bobbitt is trapped. Fires ahead to Williams. Look at the big man run to the floor. Rumbling and stumbling for two. Ivan Aore Koachea. Moves better than 6'8", 240. Boy, he was sure on the move there. Using the ball screen is Sadler. He was tripped up by his teammates. Sadler doesn't have a made field goal in three and a half minutes, and it continues. Great box out for Aore Koachea. Queen to Bobbitt. Yvonne's calling for it down low. And he pops out and catches, hands it off to Buchanan. Give the big man a touch. He's asking for it. And now he commits an offensive foul. Hmm. He was fighting too hard to get the basketball down low. Nice pass by Sean Williams. The big fella. No time for flexing that time. You had to get back. <laughs> we'll have to flex for him. Uh, when, if they can't do it, we can always do it here on the, at the court side. Micah Bradford shoves off our Buchanan no call. Now Buchanan guarding Shivers. Good defense. And Shivers hits the jumper. His first made field goal. He only has three points. Under 10 left here in half two. Queen trying to stuff it down low to Buchanan. Spacing wasn't great. Now it's better here for the Yankees under 10 to shoot. Bobbitt has to go to work. Bounces to Aore Coachea. Fall away jumper for the Spaniards. Sixteen for the big fella. Off balance layup is good for Micah Bradford. His first deuce in this half. CJ Bobbitt brings the Aggies out of the backcourt. The Aggies have outscored the Jags by 11 here at half two, 22-11. Bobbitt back out for Buchanan. Williams from the sideline. That's good. Sean Williams. That's, that's what I want to see him do. And let's see if that, that sort of breaks the ice for him. His first made three tonight. He's one of two. He's now three of 12 for the year. Buchanan commits the foul, and I think he needs a sub. He was pulling on his jersey, asking for a sub, I think, from 
Chris Giants. And he's tugging on his left leg. Or he's tugging on his right leg as well. Kind of hobbling towards the Aggie bench. That's not good. I don't know if it's a cramp or what. He's trying to stretch out right now. Kasher is joining us. Jabari Rice has only played five minutes. He's on the Aggie bench. He had ice on his left wrist earlier. Now he has his left wrist taped up. And because it's taped up, I wonder if he could go in this game if they need him. And it looks like it's taped up to the point where he could play. Now telling his teammates to clear it out. Williams again. Spins off. Rebound for Bradford. Quick release. Swishing in the three. Montice Blake, who's only played three minutes in the game. This is Dejour Joseph seeing his first action as an Aggie. Pushes it outside for Brown. His three is short. Williams saves it, tosses it ahead for Bradford. Leap pass to Burns, who flips it in. And Southern within a dozen, 55-43. And yeah, now Brown is fouled in the front court. And that is foul number 10 on Southern, so Terrell Brown will shoot two free throws on the other side of the break. The wounded Aggies ahead by a dozen, 7.45 left in half two. A look at the crowd tonight at the Pan Am Center. The Aggies leading Southern by a dozen with 7.45 left. And half number two, good crowd tonight. Good crowd for the season opener as well. A week ago against Western New Mexico and earlier this week at his weekly press conference, Aggie head coach Chris Giants talked about that crowd and how good the student section was in the season opener. Uh, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised, didn't expect that. Uh, I thought the crowd in general for, for that opener was, was great. Uh, hopefully that will continue, you know, as the competition takes an uptick. Um, but certainly uh, the student section is, is the one that, that normally makes, you know, the, the most noise, if you will, and bothers the opponent the most because of where they're seated. So uh, hopefully they'll continue to come out and support this team. The Aggies averaged just under 6,000 fans per home game last year, and this has always been Coach Brad Bird. A big time home court advantage for the Aggies. That's right, for many, many years. It's a hard place to it's a hard place to play. Terrell Brown will shoot two free throws, three points, five rebounds, two assists for the senior out of Hayward, California. First team all conference in the WAC a season ago. Led the Aggies last year in scoring. Threes made, three pointers percentage-wise as well, and also free throw percentage. Makes the first free throw. He was a team pass 78% from the line a season ago. Good on both. Southern has made four straight shots from the field, by the way. Trying to mount a comeback here. Biggest lead for the Aggies, 19. Underneath, Darius Williams, the transfer from Bakersfield. Brown breaks the press, bounces ahead for Sean Williams. A lot of minutes here tonight for Sean. Backdoor looking for Queen, stolen by the Jacks. The Kants just couldn't find him. Sadler on the bounce, tosses outside for Burns, but first a charge is drawn by Johnny McCants. And the Aggies have drawn a ton tonight 
mainly Buchanan. This one from Johnny. That was the fifth on Sadler, so he's done tonight. A lot of foul trouble, guys, for Southern still. Four on Shivers, four on Williams. Williams in right now, so is Shivers, playing through four. Lob pass down low, three defenders, nowhere to put it. Blake to the rim, double clutches, got it back, and then he stuck it home. Good hustle by Blake. McCants will reset to Terrell Brown. Queen gets it back from Aore Koachea. Moves towards the rim, back out for Williams. A long range three for the transfer from East Carolina. I think it's really important for him to, to, to get his confidence and start cutting loose a little bit. Not tonight, but just in general. Good move there on the pull-up jumper for Montes Blake, a transfer from Miami Dade College. Turnover in the backcourt. Southern trailing by 11 on possession. The Aggies have now committed 13 turnovers. Committed 16 on Tuesday. Isolation for Blake, working on Williams. Steps through, floater short. And it's tapped out of bounds, last touched by Sean Williams. Buchanan comes in and Brown heads to the Aggie bench. Southern has made seven of their previous eight shots for the field. They got off to a slow start in this half, and they've recovered nicely in the later portion. Brendan Brooks running floater. That's a tough shot. And a foul is called on the rebound, and it's going to go on Johnny McCants. He can't believe it again. His second personal. Well, I think Johnny was boxing out after the ball had already come down. and Maybe he just was a little too aggressive at trying to gain that ground. And watch him here. The ball's already, well, geez, that's hard to tell. That was team foul number seven. So one of the bonus for Burns. Southern now 11 of 15 on free throw tries. Both free throws good for Burns. Southern just won't go away. The Aggies have led by as many as 19 points in this half. The lead is cut down to nine right now. Queen barely catches it, has to hurry across midcourt. They do. Lob ahead, Aore Koachea, and he's bumped down low. <laughs> he Took a blow he to did, his head. He just keeps, takes hits down there. He's just so tough under the basket. You just kind of cringe every single time you see somebody get banged up for the Yaggies right now because you worry that's it could right, be that's serious. Right, that's right. And he barely grazes the rim on his free throw. And that means he must have been hit hard for him to miss that badly on the free throw. Once again, Acacia is joining us. Jabari Rice only played five minutes in the first half. He's been on the bench. At first he had ice on his left wrist. Now he has his left wrist taped up and still has his warm-up jersey on. So it looks like he will not return to the game. 10-point game with 4.50 left.
Jaguars shooting 40% from the field. The Aggies 43%, and that was way too easy for Ashante Shivers. Snuck right by Trev Queen. Buchanan Trap bounces out to Queen. Williams has had the hot hand in this half. Williams on the catch. Passes up a three. Looking for a better shot here. He reverses it for McCants. The skip to Williams. Great look out of the corner. Bingo! Well, I'm hoping this is the breakout game for Sean Williams. Passed up a good shot for a better shot, maybe? Yep, yep. It's just a great, great possession for the Aggies. Shivers with the answer. Timeout, Sean Woods, and this one will turn into the media. Two teams exchanging baskets under four left in the second half. Sean Williams, the transfer from East Carolina, three of five from distance. Aggies by 11. Kaylee Atkinson of the Aggie women's team watching the Aggie men here tonight. 64-56, the Aggies ahead by eight. 352 left in half two. The Aggies did not shoot it well from three in the first half. They were one of 10 from three in the first half, but they have shot it much better in half number two. And a big reason why has been Sean Williams from deep. Yes, I've been, I've been aching for him to, to cut loose just because the Aggies need the points. And uh, between him and Trevlin and Queen, they're, they're both pretty effective shooters. The Aggies five of nine from distance in this half. Queen, Brown, and Williams have done the damage. Williams made 70 plus threes in each of his two seasons at East Carolina. Now there's been a lot of talk from Chris Jans in, in the off season about the fact that Sean Williams was the go-to scorer for East Carolina, so he didn't really have to play a whole lot of defense. But if you're going to play for Chris Jans, you have to play defense. You have so to play a whole lot of defense. He's learning that right now. <laughs> That's right. But I, I would think he'd be more effective as a shooter when he's not the only option. Um, and so I, st I still expect big things from him. He drew a lot of comparisons to JoJo Zamora. I think he's a different player, but I think he can be productive in spurts like JoJo was a year ago. Yes. And jo yeah, JoJo, when, when he got hot, boy, he could oh. really... He could really light it up. Yeah, Zamora had a huge game last year at home against UNM, had a really good game in Vegas against Washington State last year at the midseason tournament. Leading scorer for the Yankees has been Ivan Aore Koachea. Game high 17 on 7 of 10 shooting. Doesn't appear to be hobbled at all by that ankle injury. Struggled on Tuesday at UTEP, but much better tonight. Six to shoot for McCants in the corner. Goes to the rim, spins to his left, and draws a foul. Johnny McCants will shoot two with 3.23 left and only one on the shot clock, so he barely got it off. Yeah, Aggie's got a break there. a lot better with his free throw shooting stroke. He was a 37% free throw shooter as a freshman. Improved to 51% last season. Second free throw for McCants. It's off. He misses both. Bank shot falls in for Montes Blake. Three minute mark left to go. Second half action. The Aggies trying to pull away from Southern, but now it's a two possession game. Trev Queen will use the Aore Koachea ball screen. Queen steps through to Buchanan. Short corner for Aore Koachea. Back out to Queen. Fade away three. Offensive rebound to McCants. Shot clock resets to 20. Williams fires. Yes, sir. 
Well, he's playing with confidence now. And this has turned into a game. The Aggie's still only up nine. Four threes in this half for Sean Williams. Darius Williams. Back to Shivers. Shivers loses the handle. Two on one. Buchanan to the trailer. Williams fires down low to McCants. Aggies will slow it down with under two left. They're ahead by nine. No need to hurry. Buchanan back out to Queen. Alareko Achea, great find by Buchanan. Really great, really a terrific pass by Sean Buchanan. Nice bounce pass inside. And Oroko Achea just did a great job of getting position. And this is going to be Aggie ball. Shivers cross the end line on the inbound. So the Yankees will get the ball because Shivers had his momentum falling forward past the end line on his inbound pass. And a foul is called on Southern before the inbound. It's Art Shivers. That's his fifth. If it's Arn Shivers, that's his fifth. They're going to call it Arn Burns, though. Well, that's his fifth. There's a lot of guys with foul trouble. Southern has fouled a ton tonight. So Burns is done. Shivers will stay in. And Sean Woods needs to bring in a sub here. He's going to bring in Amel Kajahovic. Burns is fouled out. Sadler fouled out. Bradford fouled out. Four on Lee, four on Williams, four on Shivers. Uh, that's big time foul trouble. <laughs> to the Aggies' credit, coach, the Aggies are making winning plays here down the stretch. Yes, that's right. And, and, and at this point, in, at this point in the Aggie season, they're probably better off being in a closer game anyway because it forces them to stay mentally sharp and not to relax in a blowout. Montes Blake into the front court, poked away initially by Queen. Shivers will fire, that's short. Queen is cherry picking, Buchanan won't gamble though. He'll just move it across mid court with 85 seconds left. Aggies on a 7-0 run. This is how you finish a game. Southern cut it to two possessions. They cut it to six before the Yankees started this 7-0 run over the previous 70 seconds or so. Queen, Florida shoots. The dagger. The dagger from Trev Queen. <laughs> he did this little bow and arrow. This little bow and arrow celebration. Step back three for Blake. And he answers. Timeout, Sean Woods. Blake is playing well over the previous five minutes or so. Transfer from Miami Dade College. Queen was 16 now, 17 for Sean Williams, 19 for Aore Koachea. It's been three players doing the damage here tonight for the Yankee offense. Trying to finish off this victory, the Yankees ahead by 13. A much better second half, though, Coach. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. And uh, the Aggies needed to break out half a little bit to get their confidence with these, with these huge games coming up. I know it looks better and it helps when you make shots, but a big reason why the Yankees have made shots has been because they've been in better rhythm offensively. That's right. I think that's exactly right. Buchanan will inbound, and Bobbitt is fouled before the inbound pass from Sean Buchanan. The Aggies have been in the double bonus forever.
Coach, how about this? 33 fouls are in Southern for the game. You don't see that very often. No, that's a lot of fouls. 15 in this half. There hasn't been a whole lot of flow to this game because of that. C.J. Bobbitt capitalizing on his free throws. And Bobbitt gets one out of two. Southern has to hurry, trailing by 14, final 40 seconds. Queen with the steal, and he jams it home. Highlight reel, Trev Queen. I can't believe he tried dunking that. I was a little surprised. I don't want to get a guy hurt. <laughs> I'm just paranoid about that. Queen wisely will pull it out. I think last year he tries dunking that one as well. I think that's yeah, where maybe, he's matured a maybe bit. Maybe so, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. This makes me skittish with all the Aggie injuries. Osa Wilson was near him. And that was highlight real stuff for Trev Queen. Man. Well, that won't be the last time we see that this year. Let's we'll have hope a few not. of those. Yeah, let's, not, let's hope not. And he calmly drains his free throw. <laughs> Man. Even the, even the cheerleaders are happy. It's been a little slow night. There hasn't been a whole lot of action, and that uh, was a nice way to finish it off That's for Trev right. Queen. I think we have our winner for Whataburger play of the game tonight. Montes Blake, Buchanan draws another charge. He's yep. done that, I think, five times, Coach. Yeah. Buchanan the inbound for Queen. Southern's bench is saying, do not foul. Buchanan across the timeline, and the Yagis will improve to two and one. A much better second half for the injury riddled Aggies. They outscored Southern 49 38 and half two. After leading by only five points at the break. Trent Queen scores 20, none better than his final two on the dunk. Seven of 13 shooting for Queen, three of seven on threes, 19 and six rebounds for Ivan Aore Koachea. 17 for Sean Williams. Nice game for him off the Yagi bench. He made four threes, and my coach was talking about maybe gain some confidence with the shots he made in the second half. The Yankees will have Arizona Sunday afternoon to cap off the week. Southern will have a non-D1 game Monday, and then they are at Nebraska next Friday. 79-63, the final score from the Pan Am Center. The Yankees improved to two and one, and Southern falls to one and two. Aggie head coach Chris Jans is with us courtside uh, Coach, a nice second half. You scored 49 and half two. You made some shots. Did you like the rhythm you had offensively in that second half? It was better than it was our last outing. That's all we've talked about for the last 48 hours is, you know, running our system, sharing the ball. We were very stagnant uh, on Tuesday, and it was very disappointing for us to uh, let the distractions of defense and the crowd and uh, what have you uh, make us – revert to just standing around. So that was the big focus tonight was moving, sharing, cutting, um, trying to get, you know, shots that we know where they're coming from rather than, you know, having to just rely on one-on-one. -on -one. So that was uh, better tonight for sure. Sean Williams made some shots in half two. Did you see him gain some confidence as that half went on? 
Well, we need him. You know, I, I don't know why he wouldn't be a confident shooter. That's what he's done his whole life is uh, get buckets. You know, before he arrived here, he was a double-figure scorer in a good league. And, you know, that's why he's here. Is he's got to be able to get buckets for us. And he's an improving defender. And hopefully uh, this will get, you know, him going a little bit. And uh, I think he can do that um, pretty regularly for us. Your thoughts on your defense tonight? Better. Um, certainly we had that stretch there where, you know, the game was kind of in hand. And, uh, I was really thinking about trying to rest some guys, and obviously that was a big mistake because the game turned quickly. But overall, you know, I thought we played great defense for about 30 minutes, and then uh, we had a stretch there where uh, they were just going one-on-one -on -one and we weren't moving our feet very well, but it certainly was better than our last game. At Arizona Sunday, tough challenge, but a good challenge for your program. No question, you know. Um, Great program, uh, great staff, great players. Uh, opportunity for us to play on a big stage, and we've always reveled in that since we've arrived. And uh, these guys will be ready to go. Certainly, it's a tall order with the situation we're in, but we're going to go over there and play our try to play our best. Coach, thanks so much. Thanks, Adam. That's Aggie head coach Chris Jans. The Aggies victorious here tonight at the Pan Am Center. Final score: 79 to 63. Our postgame show will begin when we come back to the Pan Am as the Aggies come out victorious against Southern.